Andrew Fagan, his friends call him Andy, <laughs> discovered Unitarian Universalism in 2008 at the Unitarian Universalist Fellowship of Huntington, New York. Realizing that he had found the spiritual home he had been searching for, he, he signed their book shortly thereafter. In 2013, once he and his wife Mimi began living in Cambria part-time, he signed the book here at the UUCC. As a part of his search for deeper meaning as a UU, Andy has attended three general assemblies. The first in 2012, which took place in Phoenix and was entitled Justice General Assembly and focusing on human rights violations taking place at the border with Mexico. <clears throat> During that GA, he joined with over a thousand attendees in a march to the border, where Maricopa County Sheriff Joe Arpaio, Arpaio oversaw the infamous Tent City Jail. Arpaio was convicted in July of 2017 for criminal contempt of court and pardoned by President Donald Trump on August 25th, 2017. Today's sermon reflects all of our UU7 principles and is titled, Rooted, Inspired, and Ready, a report from GA 2020 by Andy Fagan. Andy? Thank you, Diane, and good morning, everyone. Good morning. These are very special and challenging times. We're doing so much virtually. In fact, Randy's going to transition us to a website in a moment where videos of many of the sections of GA 2020 can be accessed. How lovely that we call the realm of the internet the World Wide Web. Uh, it's almost as if a Unitarian Universalist had come up with that name. <laughs> Very special and challenging times. Just a couple of days since we remembered the tragedy of 9-11. Uh, we're in the age of the COVID pandemic. We've got dreadful fires burning across the West. And we're experiencing re-energized calls for racial and social justice. And struggling with deep political divisions. It's important to find ways to be lifted up. At General Assembly this year, Dr. Issei Barnwell and the UUA General Assembly Virtual Choir did just that with a performance of We Are. For each child that's born, a morning star rises and sings to the universe who we are. For each child that's born, a morning star rises and sings to the universe who we are.
One has the opportunity to go back to your roots, to be amongst people with whom you actually share DNA. Like when my family traveled to Israel for our son Ben's 13th birthday. In a similar way, that same feeling comes while attending Unitarian Universalist Association General Assembly. In the case of GA, it's not your biological DNA that's shared, but your spiritual DNA. Normally, in attending General Assembly, you experience what it feels like to be surrounded by a couple of thousand other UUs, folks who share a very important aspect of lot, their lives with you, surrounded by so many loving people, full of positive energy, caring, and passion for a better world through our chosen faith. More than ever, inclusivity is a dominant theme with the UUA and GA 2020, reflected that both, both with the topics discussed and debated and the procedures designed to welcome and encourage participation by everyone. More than just making an effort, GA and the UUA have embraced harnessing the power of love to end oppression with a call to break down divisions, heal isolation, and honor the interconnectedness of all life and all justice issues. It's a high bar, and attending GA is a constant exercise in walking in others' shoes, appreciating what it means to be everything anyone might be. This year, GA was originally scheduled to be held in Providence, Rhode Island, at a convention center which stands on what was once Mashpee Wampanoag tribal land. The welcoming celebration began with a drum and dance ceremony performed by members of that tribe. ceremony was the first of many reminders of our first principle, the inherent worth and dignity of every person, especially those people who our culture of white supremacy has marginalized. If the terms white supremacy and white privilege make you uncomfortable, you quickly learn that you have work to do. Earlier, Diane read the General Assembly practices for fostering multicultural dialogue and community. These practices were at the core of GA this year. Again, great emphasis was placed throughout GA on heightening awareness of embedded forms of racism, ableism, and oppression, and how they impact our UU community and the larger world community. The welcoming ceremony celebration continued then like a worship service with music, readings, prayers, a homily, and a benediction featuring a UU superstar lineup of speakers. It was followed immediately that evening by General Session 1, led by our GA co-moderators, Alondria Williams and Reverend Mr. Barb Grieve, who are elected to those positions and would appear throughout the week here are some excerpts from their letter included in the program book, which capture the spirit of the gathering. They say, we are so excited to welcome you to our first ever all digital assembly. More than ever, now is the time for us to come together as a faith community and proclaim and live our values into the world, 
a Unitarian Universalism rooted in liberation, justice, compassion, care, and collective change. Our faith has the power and potential to provide many people with a place of harbor, and General Assembly is our time to practice the best of what this religion has to offer. As UUA President Reverend Dr. Susan Frederick Gray has said, this is no time for a casual faith. We are in need of transformative and radical change in our world and in Unitarian Universalism. Our denomination is blessed by all of those who are learning, who are leaning into the challenges of this moment and embracing the possibilities for transformation. We are grateful for the guidance of the Commission on Institutional Change and for opportunities to revisit the core tenets of our faith, such as through the establishment of an Article II Commission, which will review the important bylaw section that includes our seven principles and six sources and our statements on purpose, inclusion, and freedom of belief. Get ready for possibly an eighth principle. We are in a time of pandemic, social movement, and transformation, which is just as much about who we want to be as individuals as it is about who we want our communities to be. We invite you to bring your whole self to this General Assembly. Be ready to be uplifted, transformed, inspired, and resourced to go out and fundamentally shift our world. Be ready to help shape our governance and decision-making so that it is ever more in line with our UU values and theological understandings, and ever less about critique, competition, and lack of trust. Be ready to dance, sing, laugh, cry, pray, meditate, reflect, and learn from powerful speakers and presenters. We understand that going virtual will be harder for some and easier for others. We encourage you to reach out to the amazing IT staff and volunteer tech supporters who are making all of this possible and are here to support you. Thank you for helping us make this GA and this government's of our faith successful. Quite a letter. General session one was gaveled to order. Had a remembrance of UUs who have recently passed away, which was followed by an introduction to the chaplains who would be available for consultation during the GA. A presentation by the right relationship team appointed to deal with issues any attendees experience in which they were made to feel uncomfortable, disrespected or harmed in any way, or marginalized based on their identities, always a challenging task and perhaps even more so with GA taking place in a virtual realm. This committee reports throughout General Assembly citing instances that have been brought to their attention. They provide healing for those who feel they've been mistreated, and for all attendees, a deep dive into heightened sensitivity to the multitude of ways we may behave hurtfully without even being aware. Learning from their work is central to the overall experience of GA. The first general session concluded with a vote to adopt updated rules of procedure. Some nuts and bolts of General Assembly and Virtual General Assembly, and then I'll get into a couple of the workshops I experienced. Everyone attending GA had to register online and pay a registration fee of $150. Those of us who were to serve as delegates for our congregation had to go an extra step in order to become credentialed for voting at the general sessions, where the business of the UUA is done. With Treva's backing, I served as a delegate for the UUCC. The UUA offered pre-conference uh, onboarding webinars where you learned how things were going to work. And all attendees were sent a PDF of the 84-page program book, which is the Bible for GA. It includes an essential one-page summary schedule for all five days of events. 
Once registered, you were given a link and a password that allowed you to enter the participation portal. This was the home base from where everything happened. It looked like this. And you can see the speaker's window there in the middle. To the left are a list of tabs you can go to for various sources that, was, that related to GA. On the upper right, um, I took a screen grab. At this moment, uh, a vote is taking place. So as you can see, you can vote pro or con uh, or abstain. And eventually, those votes would be tallied and they'd show the results. Down in the lower right, there was the discussion tool. That was specifically for discussions of amendments from the floor, uh, where folks who were, were for or against um, a proposal could speak. And then in the middle, right under the speaker's window, is a chat room. There were actually numerous chat rooms. You could bounce around into various ones. They all had cute names. Um, and see people commenting on what was going on, asking questions. They were very active, scrolling the whole time during GA. Based on the schedule, you would log on to the participation portal in anticipation of a session. There'd be music playing and slides with general information. And then at the designated time, the session would begin. Various leaders, moderators, and staff would appear in the speaker window and take us through the agenda. When it came time to debate proposals, people would line up virtually in the proponent, concern, or amendment and procedures queue, pro, con, amendment and procedures. We could see the names of folks in those queues, and if they had prepared a statement ahead of time, it would be available to review on the screen. When recognized by the moderator of the session, they would appear in the speaker window and state their case. If there were folks in the amendments and procedures queue, the moderators would always go to those folks as soon as possible. Once there were no more concerns or amendments to consider, a voting window would appear and we delegates would vote virtually. The process would sometimes get bogged down technically or simply because someone forgot to unmute themselves. We know what that feels like. Sometimes there were delays and awkward pauses when connections stalled or something wasn't switched correctly, apologies were made and we moved on. There was a technical team behind the scenes doing the best they could to make it all function properly in this brave new world. In any case, things improved as time went on. Computer servers were added to manage the heavy load of data that had to be processed, and most everyone remained patient. In truth, the business of GA during these virtual business sessions ended up being more streamlined than I've experienced in previous in-person assemblies. It seems this was partly due to changes in the rules of procedure uh, that had been put in place for 2020, and perhaps because of the virtual nature of the process, fewer people chose to speak. Business proposals to be voted on by the General Assembly were printed in the program book ahead of time. The first was a proposal titled embodying human rights in our investment decisions. The purpose of which was to ensure that investments by the UU Common Endowment Fund, UUCEF, not be in, and the words are highlighted there on your screen, not be in corporations that are consistently, knowingly, and directly complicit in egregious human rights violations. It was passed by a large majority. And there were two proposals amending the UUA bylaws, one regarding co-moderator vacancies and one regarding timelines for the nominating committee. I jumped ahead. Timelines for the nominating committee. These last two proposals may sound familiar to those of us who've been working on updates of our own UUCC bylaws. Beyond these proposals, a very important aspect of GA are proposals called Actions of Immediate Witness, or AIWs. Those are submitted to the Commission on Social Witness, CSW. This was, after all, a UU event, so there's lots of acronyms. Those are submitted to the CSW for presentation to the Assembly. An AIW does not carry full authority 
of the Unitarian Universalist Association. Rather, it expresses the conscience, conscience and, car and carries the authority of the delegates present at the GA at which it is passed. AIWs reflect social witness, defined as the act of courageously affirming what is just and good through speech and action that demonstrates solidarity with those who are mistreated or that imagines and articulates social justice or collective liberation." End quote. Some of this year's AIWs were entitled Address 400 Years of White Supremacist, White Supremacist Colonialism. Amen to Uprising, a Commitment and Call to Action. The Pandemic, a Religious Response. Amend the 13th, and Slavery and Perverse Incentives to the Prison Industry. Another one called George Can't Breathe, But We Can Vote. Another one, Thanksgiving Day for All Peoples. And finally, end the use of Facebook and its subsidiaries for any church business. The CSW chooses three AIWs, which get posted online through the participation portal and voted on during the fifth general session. If approved, these AIWs guide the focus of UUA and UUs throughout the year going forward. These AIWs are often the most contentious issues the General Assembly grapples with. So that's a glimpse into the business and policy work at GA. Then there are the religious and congregationally oriented sessions, dozens of them to choose from each day. This is just two days worth. So based on your interests, you pick which workshops you'll attend. You register for those online the evening prior and find a Zoom link in your inbox the next morning, just like the one you used to get on this morning's service. On Thursday, I chose Faith Forward, a path for engagement. The presenters pictured here offer a program congregations can subscribe to designed to help nurture future leaders within their congregations. If you look closely, you'll notice that this workshop began at 7 a.m. Pacific. I was in my sweats with my just woke up face and a large mug of coffee at my side. The session had about 250 attendees. It was okay to turn off your video camera the presentation looked pretty much like the one I'm giving right now. After their introduction, the leaders asked the following question. If you had all the volunteer leadership grounded in UUism that you could wish for, what could you do in your congregation and beyond? Then they announced that we were dividing up into virtual breakout rooms of eight people to discuss the question. Suddenly, I was virtually transported into a Zoom breakout room. Gulp, I zippered up my hoodie sweatshirt, <laughs> fluffed my hair, and turned on my camera. At first, the eight of us all just looked at each other in <laughs> silence, and then I said, I, I guess we're supposed to talk about something. That broke the ice, and the discussion began. We introduced ourselves and set off on a good discussion around the question, feeling the UU bond we shared, even though gathered virtually from across the nation. At one point, one of the leaders popped up, asked how we were doing, listened in as we continued our discussion, and then exited. With 256 attendees, there would have been around 30 breakouts to check on. Eventually, we were merged all together again, and the session was concluded. I've previously met Reverend Dr. Galen Gindrich and heard him speak at his congregation, All Souls Unitarian Church of New York. He's a great thinker, great writer, great minister. So Friday morning, it was an easy choice to attend his workshop, Get Ready to Transform Gratitude as Spiritual Practice. At that session, Reverend Galen stated, spirituality, in my view, is not mainly about me. Rather, it shifts my awareness from focusing mostly on myself 
as independent of other people and the world around me, to focusing on how I am connected to everyone and everything else. Spiritual experiences move beyond my own experience in the present, what I happen to need or want here and now, to an awareness that I am an inseparable part of a larger whole. In this sense, spirituality opens us to a deep awareness of life's most profound reality, which is this. Everything is made up of relationships. Everything in the universe is made up of relationships. Galen continues, and hang on. In a culture that continually touts individuality and self-reliance as defining virtues, and increasingly understands spirituality in self-referential terms, it's a counterintuitive claim that we are defined not by how we are independent of the people in the world around us, but how we are connected to them. Yet this claim happens to be true. He concludes, in a world where everything is made up of relationships, the only way to stay healthy, whether physically, economically, or spiritually, is to stay focused not on who we are in isolation from everyone and everything else, but who we are in relation to them. That takes on even more meaning in this time of socially distanced relationships. And now I have only scratched the surface of GA. There was so much more to it, and so much more than any one person could possibly take in. I've not mentioned entire programs, such as the Young Adult Program YA at GA, and DRUM, the diverse and revolutionary UU multicultural ministries. There was a poignancy throughout the whole event, Though most everyone was missing the hugs, the hallway chats, the simple humanity we're all longing for lately, special moments transcended the separation. While staring into your computer screen, you'd be drawn in. You'd lose yourself, your physical self, and become one with the virtual spirit of life that bound us together. One such moment came when Dr. Glenn Thomas Rideout sang Linda Hershorn's Circle Round Freedom. Please let it take you to that special place. Randy. So
having recently achieved the status of grandfather, the words resonate deeply. For the children of our children, keep the circle whole. Thank you.